Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to take you through the new capacitor plugin for Google Maps and show you how we can implement this into our Ionic React applications. <laughs> So this was actually just released a few days ago and it gives us as developers a really easy way to implement Google Maps into our mobile apps. I'm going to show you the API reference. I'm going to show you how to set up the API key through the Google Cloud Console. And then I'm going to show you how to set up a map and also set up different markers on the map with click events as well. So without further ado, let's jump in. Okay guys, so first of all, I just want to take you through quickly the announcement post that was posted by the Ionic team. And this basically gives you everything that you need. So we install it by running npm install capacitor forward slash Google Maps. If you're using it on iOS or Android, you will need to add a few lines to your info.p list or your Android manifest as well. The next big crucial part is signing up for the Google Maps SDKs. So you can see on screen here that we need the Android, the iOS and the JavaScript Maps SDK. So to do this, you basically have to sign up for Google Cloud Console. And the way to do this is basically go to the Google Cloud Console, sign up with your email address. You do have to enable billing. So you will have to put in a credit card or a debit card. However, I'm pretty certain you do get around 300 pounds worth of free credits to try out all of these different APIs. So once you have created your account and you've enabled billing, the first thing to do is come into enabled APIs and services. Click on the enable APIs and services. You can either search for the three maps SDKs that we need very handily. They're right here for us on screen. So you'd basically just click into one of these and you would click on enable and this would enable it against your account. So once you've got those three things enabled, we basically need to go back to our dashboard. So back at the dashboard, we want to go into credentials for production apps and for yourself maybe don't be showing anyone your api key but for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to create a new api key and i will have my api key on show here in this video however i will delete it after so we basically come over here to create credentials and we select the api key this will basically create our api key for us so you can see here api key one and we've got the key here after we've done this, that is us pretty much ready to get started into building our Google Maps implementation into our Ionic mobile app. So let's jump into the code now. So to keep things quite similar to the API reference, I am going to follow the API reference from the capacitor docs. I will have the link to this in the description of this video. Um, so if you scroll through this, you can find some examples. So for example, here is an Angular example. Here's a React example. We are going to do it a little bit different to what this example is. In this example, there is a button which basically creates our map for us. But we are going to use the Ionic lifecycle hooks to create our map for us whenever the page loads. So I've just set up a quick test app. I've called it Capacitor Google Map and I've came into the home page. So the first thing that we're going to need is the API key that we've copied from the Google Cloud Console. So as I mentioned before, don't paste your API key into your JavaScript file. You would want to keep it in uh, either an environment variable file or request it from a server. But for the sake of this tutorial, I am just going to have it in the file here. So I'm going to name this key. The next thing we're going to need is a few variables to hold the map and also a reference to the element that's on the page. So let's say let new map and let's set up a ref for our map whenever we create our map. So we can say const map ref equals use ref. 
and set it to null. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a map configuration and I'm going to store this in a use state variable. And the reason being is just in case somewhere down the line we wanted to update our map configuration based on a button click or some other action that the user takes, then we could trigger a re-render on the screen and display the changes within our map config. So I'm going to paste this in. The map configuration is basically how we configure what our Google map is going to look like whenever it initially displays. For example, the zoom, the center coordinates, and the map type and other things. You can reference this from the API reference that I will link in the description. You can also check out the Google Maps documentation as well to get a better understanding of what we're actually doing. However, for this simple example, I am literally just setting the zoom to 12. So next, we're actually going to create our map. So in order to do this, we're going to import the Google Map component from Capacitor Google Maps. And what this Google Map component gives us is also an expose method called create, where we can pass in certain things and our map config as well to create our map. So this create map function, as you can see on line 18 here, is basically, first of all, checking if there isn't a map ref.current, then just return and come out of this function. Then we set the new map to the create method from the Google map. And we're basically passing in the element, whatever element it is. We're passing in our API key, which I have exposed on our JavaScript file. And we're passing in our config as well, which is our map config that we've set up already. Now, once we have the create map function done, we need to now have an element within our return that our map is going to attach to. So based on the announcement post and the documentation, you can see here that with the Capacitor Google Maps project installed and your API key set up, it's time to create your first Google Map element. The good thing about this plugin is that the Google Maps plugin comes with a web component that handles a lot of the heavy lifting and it automatically communicates back to the native layer for you. So basically we're going to implement this Capacitor Google Map web component. So let's come down into our ION page and inside our ION content, I'm just going to set up an ION row with an ION call of size 12. And in here, I'm going to paste my capacitor Google map. Now you can see I've set the ref to the map ref that we initialized at the top. And then this create method here will take in that map ref dot current. So that's the basic setup done. Now all we need to do is call this function, call this create map function. Now in the documentation for React, it is done via a button click, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do it based on a lifecycle hook in React. So let's come down here and say use ion view will enter. And when we enter the page, we're going to call our create map function. Now with our create map function being called when the view enters, there's one more thing that we need to do. So within our map config, we have to supply a center value. And the way that we do this is basically center is an object and inside the object, we've got a lot and a long. So we could set this to anything. We could go to Google Maps and place a point and grab the latitude and longitude values and then paste them in here if we wanted. However, what I have done prior to making this video is if I come into this index.js inside the data folder, I've set up a few different points and called them markers. So these are basically a few takeaways that are around my current location of where I live. I've included a title, a description, an address, a website, and a phone as well as the latitude and longitude values. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna import markers and just say markers zero dot lat. And for long, I'm gonna say markers zero dot long. Now, if we save this, our map should appear, as you can see. 
it's centered on our latitude and longitude values of the zero position of the markers array and it's zoomed in by 12. So if we were to change this zoom value, you can see that it zooms out and it zooms out even further. But for this, I will keep it as about 12. Actually, let's go, let's go 10. So now we have a map rendered in our Ionic React application. Perfect, it's so easy. We've literally written 60 lines of code and not even because most of it was already there anyway. So the next thing I wanna show you is how we can place markers on a map and also some click event handlers for our markers that are on our map as well. So I'm going to create an add map marker function. So I'll paste this in. This is one that I've made earlier. And basically what this is doing is it's calling the add marker method that's coming from our, our map basically. So the add marker gets called, we pass in a coordinate object and a title as well. And then what we can do is we could just create a little function that loops over our array from here that I've already created, pulls out the latitude, longitude and the title and passes it into that add map marker. So what I'll do is I will paste this in and you can see it's very, very simple const add markers is markers dot for each and then we're just calling add map marker and passing in the marker then inside our add map marker we are pulling out the marker dot lat marker dot long and the marker dot title we need to call our add map markers function so within our create map which is getting called to initialize our map and render our map on the screen initially we can literally just call the add map markers function in here and hit save. Now, if we refresh over here, you can see that we've got markers. So I think there's a, there's about six, one, two, three, four. Okay. There's five. And at the moment, if we click on one of these, nothing happens. And that's because we haven't added any event listeners for the click of a marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement a bottom sheet modal with breakpoints. And whenever we click a marker, it opens up the bottom sheet modal with the marker details displayed inside it. So the first thing that we'll need is we need to keep track of which marker has been selected. So we'll use a use state variable for this. And let's just call it selected marker. Set selected marker equals use state and we'll set this to null. The next thing we're going to need is the overlay hook for an ion modal. So I will paste this in. And basically the use ion modal is imported from Ionic React. I've also went ahead and already created a marker info window component. And I will show you that right now. Basically all it is is a container to hold some information. So I'm displaying the, the marker title, the marker description. I'm displaying the address, the website, the phone, and a few buttons that don't do anything. I'm also displaying some icons that relate to each bit of detail within this modal. And what I've just pasted in here is the use ion modal hook, passing in the component that we want to render, and then passing in the marker into the component as the selected marker. At this point, we can present the modal or dismiss the modal. If you're not familiar with the bottom sheet modal, I will leave a link in the top right here to a video that I recently put out as well, going through the bottom sheet modal, which was introduced in Ionic 6. So the next thing we need are some modal options. So we'll create a variable here called modal options equals and we'll just set it up as an object in here we're going to set up our breakpoints and our dismiss function which will be used to display the bottom sheet modal so i'm just going to paste these in so i've set the initial breakpoint to 0.4 i've set up breakpoints to be 0 and 0 0.4 the backdrop breakpoint i've set to 0 so we get that nice fade effect as soon as the bottom sheet modal appears and I've set the on did dismiss to just the dismiss function. 
So what we need now is a function to handle the click of a marker. So let's create a little marker click function. Uh, let's just call it marker click. And this is gonna take in a marker as a param. And then I'm just gonna paste in a few things here. First thing is we're going to set the selected marker. So the marker that we press, we get a reference from the Google map. We get the ID and index from the actual Google map implementation. So it won't be a direct reference to our local array, but we can easily pull that out based on the Latin long values. So I'm setting the selected marker based on if the marker latitude and longitude are in the current position of the loop is equal to the marker latitude and longitude that I've passed in here. And then what we wanna do is we just present and pass in the modal options in here. So we've successfully set up a bottom sheet modal. We've set up a marker click function. We have set the selected marker and we have called the present function to present the bottom sheet modal. So now what we need to do is add an event listener to each marker to tell it what to do. Whenever we click a marker, what do we want to happen? So come back down into the create map function here. Remember, this is what happens whenever it is getting initialized and it's getting rendered on the page for the first time. The API from the capacitor plugin has a really nice function that basically lets us set up a marker click event listener. If you check out the API reference, there are a lot more there as well that you can utilize and use in different ways. However, for this implementation, this is what we're going to use. We're going to use set on marker click listener. And how do we use this? Well, we call it directly from the new map. And in here, we pull out the marker. And what do we want to happen when we click on the, this marker? We want to call our marker click function and pass in the marker. Now, if we hit save and come over here, you will see whenever I click on one of these, you can see our bottom sheet modal appears with the details related to the marker that I've clicked. I can click through different ones. Let's zoom in and try one of these. So you can see there's a Chinese takeaway, another Chinese takeaway, another Chinese takeaway. You can, you can tell I, I love, I love Chinese food, but you get the point. So, what we've currently done is we've set up our map, we've initialized our map with our API key and our map config. We have set up some markers, some custom markers. We've set up a custom on-click event handler for the markers. And we've also implemented a bottom sheet modal, which was introduced in Ionic 6 using the use ion modal overlay hook. There is a lot more that you can do with the Google Maps plugin. Be sure to check out that API reference, but I'm hoping that this is a good start for you to implement the Google Maps plugin into your Ionic React applications and just have fun with it. Be creative in your implementations. I hope this video was helpful and it helps you implement the Google Maps capacitor plugin into your Ionic React applications. As always, I will leave all the links in the description to the API reference, the announcement blog post, and also to the GitHub repo, where I'm gonna put the code from this tutorial video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure you do so you don't miss out on all future upcoming videos. Until the next time, thanks.